Hi everyone and welcome to another card tutorial. Today I'm gonna dig deep down into the Simon's Stamp March card kit. It was a while since I got a kit and I was so happy to get my hands on this and we are gonna play with a lot of the supplies. I'm also gonna have a small giveaway at the end of the video so stay tuned for that but first let's jump into the card kit. So I'm gonna have a really quick walkthrough. You have some glitter cardstock, you have a little cute hello die, you get 24 watercolor pencils, you get three sheets of watercolor cardstock with pre-printed floors on, you get three envelopes, uh, you get a stamp set with a lot of nice sentiments and very beautiful floors and leaves, you get some patterned paper with some watercolor washes and some kind of watercolorish leaves and flowers. They are super calm. I really love this little paper pattern paper kit. They are single sided. You also get a little craft tacky glue. Um, I really wanted to try that so awesome and I got four sheets of cardstock uh, in various colors. But we or I am going to concentrate on the watercolor pencils. It's been years. Uh, I haven't been using watercolor pencils since like 2009, 2010 and um, I'm pleasantly surprised over the development in pigmentation and stuff in the pencils. But first here I'm doing a little swatch. Uh, a little note is that the colors are more similar to the kind of the pen nib or the pen lead or what it is inside then to the pen barrel and sadly none of the pens have either a number or a um, name or something for the colors so you can't really label your swatches to something corresponding in the pen um, but watching the looking at the nib you get kind of an idea on what kind of color that is going to come out of that pen I use my uh, brush, dip it in water and kind of tap on some excess water but you can also uh, go directly to the pen nib and pick up the color. It won't be as bright as I could get it in some of the deeper crevices but you will get kind of a flat color though. So for the first flower I am actually going to make two cards out of it. Uh, this was an adventure. Uh, as I haven't been working with watercolor pencils for a very, very long time, I kind of didn't use them as you use watercolor pencils. Instead, I did some kind of mixture of how I would use my markers and how I would use my pencils. So what I did was I tried to kind of blend them on the paper, just giving a quote unquote light wash of the pencils um, and then filling in those green stems and then I after that I went in with the water. However the water will move the pigment quite substantially and I ended up getting a texture that I wasn't it's kind of cool but it wasn't what I was looking for. I was hoping to get a very smooth kind of go from blue to green and well that didn't happen. Um, I am very very happy over the amount of pigmentation like it's not a super bold color. You get a lot more co bold color with markers however I loved how the color that actually was in the pen uh, really melts with the water and you get very little of that base texture from the pen. Um, however, I did also go in very lightly with the pens. I didn't have a lot of pressure onto the nibs because uh, if you have a lot of pressure you start indentation in the watercolor cardstock and then that will really really shine through. So I just tried to go very lightly over and where I, I really added like light to dark colors I really try to go from a light color into the dark so that I don't kind of get that even color you would get if you go from the darker to the lighter too fast but um, I really struggled with these flowers for a couple of reasons one of them was that I felt the blue was a little bit too 
stark against the flowers. I would have wanted probably to have it inverted, uh, have a much lighter background and a much brighter flower. Um, so I really tried to fix it and I actually ended up after about an hour or an hour and a half of coloring just leaving it and coming back to it the next day because I just didn't get it to look the way I wanted and it actually didn't look the way I wanted as I finished either but that is all right because I could make some something from it that I actually did like. Um, I did try to layer a lot and one of the things that really surprised me with these spe specific pens is that they don't lift very much. So when you go in with another pen on top of it, you will just get a wash on top of whatever you have done and you can't really mix it into the darkness. Uh, after they have dried, they will not move. So you need to get those shadows placed where you want them to be because you will not be able to pick them up again, almost like markers. So they're a little bit similar like that. And I really like that. I really like because then I could layer on top of them. They were just one thing and that is that it isn't because they are watercolor. They don't have that really, really deep, deep, deep colors. So I came to a point where some of the pens, I couldn't get them darker because the pen itself wasn't darker. And I didn't want to go into with like black tones or anything like that. So I didn't get the contrast that I wanted, but that was more because I didn't really know how to work with them the first time. But here is what I realized, but well, if I go in and I cut in pieces and kind of just do like these thinner strips onto my card, then maybe I will like this because then it, the I think it was this big like sea of green that kind of threw me off a little bit. So I cut them down to one and a half inch strips, two of them, and I ended up making two different cards from these one and a half inch strips. So I have these Nina Solar White um, card bases that I've made myself. So I just took a sheet of Nina Solar White, I split it in half and then I scored in the middle and folded it very simple that is how i make most of my card bases i love having white card bases and then just covering them up but in this case i really wanted the white to show and because the cardstock itself already had slightly a yellow tint and uh, in a sol solar white was awesome because it isn't a cold white it actually has a little bit of a warmer white and i i, I enjoy that so I added my two uh, strips, uh, the one that was kind of, I placed the one that was taken from the right side of the image on the right side of the card and the, on the left side of the image, the left side of the card. I did go in and cut a little piece off there because it was a little bit longer than the card. And then I decided to have the same sentiment on both of them. I took it from the sentiment set or the stamp set that came with the kit and it's call me, I miss you or something like that there. Or whatever that's the word call me or text me whatever Perf perfect perfect and I felt that it was a kind of a perfect sentiment for the time that we are in also I really really like that um, I didn't want a super stark black so I actually used my tuxedo black ink because it is a little bit softer than most black inks and then I went in with these little crystals to add details um, those little mini round ones is kind of a throwback too because I think I got them in a flower fairy um, pack from Craft to Companion in like 2009 or 2010 so they are really old <laughs> I don't think you can get them anywhere anymore uh, but I really really like them um, and I started making these uh, kind of little uh, wisps of them and I ended up not liking it and moving it down making a little triangle I like triangles eyes like triangles and I did the same here but I accidentally because they, they're old and they weren't a super good quality from the beginning I uh, ripped the glue off one so I had to pick another one but yeah those these are the two cards that I made from those strips I had a lot of fun with that
But then I decided, well, I'm going to use all three of them and I'm going to experiment in how I use the pens. So in this case, I knew I wanted to color the whole flower. However, I wanted my shadows to really have more of an oomph. And I've sp sped this up a lot because coloring with watercolor pencils do take time. Uh, I think some of these clips are sped up by like 600 times because it took a lot of time. Here I put, picked out three different reds that I kind of put on each other um, and they blend really well if they are dry together on top um, while if you try to make kind of color one layer let it dry and then color a second layer and hope that they will blend they will not but when you when they're when you put them on dry you can actually layer different colors and the pigment will blend when they kind of break down with the water which i really really enjoy and um, i didn't go for a very bright poppy here like not like this stark bright because i don't think i could get it i just wanted one simple layer i wanted to make one simple coloring session of this so I used the um, the reds, the three reds for it with the darker red as the darker shadow and then I used two different greens for the stems. So it's one that is a little bit more of a muddy green and then I have one that is a very very bright green and together they actually blended out to this beautiful midway of both of them and because I added those darker things at the darker places when I went in with the water it kind of kept a lot of that darkness there and gave me that contrast and dimension that I wanted. It's still not Copics but it was a much better result and this is what you get if you actually use the watercolor pencils as they're made to be used and not as markers. That is something I always struggle with. I've been coloring with markers for over 10 years now and you get into these techniques that you use with everything and then you want to learn watercolor and it's it's so much different in how you handle like the p brush and everything. Finally getting a hand on actually using the brush. Um, that took some time practice you know practice make perfect and a little bit of black in the middle to those kind of things because I think they're supposed to be and to finish it off I decided to do a splatter effect because I wanted to break up the white background but I really didn't want to make any more coloring because it didn't work out well with my last flowers it didn't give me the result I wanted at least so what I did was I used some aged mahogany some candied apple and then I also used some ground espresso and I made these little dots and yes I dipped my brush into the paper because I wasn't paying attention um, yeah, but then um, I used some very very thinly uh, blended ground espresso on top of it and yeah that's just the background super simple using a stitched rectangular die just to cut it out to give it just that little extra edge detail um, I use uh, small pieces of tape to kind of just tape it down uh, this is how I always use it and then I also also cut out this little hello die that came in the kit uh, from some just brown scraps I had laying around. Use your scraps for those things. They they are really good and, and you can get more out of the materials. Adding some foam tape to the back side. Um, I still don't have any fo foam board or anything to use. Uh, it's way too expensive here in Sweden. Um, you pay two, three, four dollars for a sheet. It's not worth it. This tape is much cheaper. Um, but yeah, so I used that and then I'm going to use the little hello and my new little glue. I actually really like this glue. Um, it's very, it is very tacky. So it's not like just ordinary school glue, but it smells like ordinary school, school glue. I don't know, something like that. And I finish it off by using some Nouveau crystal gloss, I think, or crystal something. 
yeah and i again do as i say don't do as i do don't use your tweezers for this use a pointer tool or something but again my tweezers were lying around my to pointer tool was not so i took my tweezers again and just kind of moved that around a little bit to kind of cover the whole die because it had those really thin lines then i very quickly dried off my my tweezers opened them and dried them off again so they don't glue together and this is the card that uh, finished and for the last card i am going to use the last of those sheets and this is the most simple coloring i wanted to keep as much white as possible i just wanted to add some kind of accent color so i went in with the purple and then a very like the purplish pink color just to brighten up the purple a little bit i had a kind of a magnolia flower in mind um, they're white and then they have these little pink and, and purple details in them. Uh, I love magnolias. It's one of my my favorite flowers. I got a magnolia perfume when I was like 10. Um, and it was my prized possession. And I have loved magnolia flowers since then. I'm not sure that I like the, the smell of them anymore. Because it's a very sweet smell. But I kind of it's it's a good it's a good memory you know it's a good memory so here i'm just kind of bringing out the color so i'm i'm using the water to kind of just get the color to move just slightly and just move it out a little bit from what i colored and not really that much details uh i don't go directly from the bucket of water into my cardstock. I haven't done that at all. And that is a very good thing to think about because if you add, if you add too much water and you want to blot it away, you will blot away a lot of the pigment. So you do want to use some lighter notes, a lighter, lighter hand with the water, just so that you don't have to remove water from the cardstock. So for the little branch, I decided to just give it a little bit of a brown texture uh, just on the side to give it dimension, but don't kind of color it in because the airiness of the flowers was so airy that I didn't want to add very thick color. And that was the kind of the whole idea was to make it very airy. And then I'm gonna fussy cut this out. And I have a couple of tips. First of all, this is watercolor cardstock. It's going to be hard to cut. So go even slower than you usually do. This I think is sped up by like 600 times. It takes time, but I have it for me. It's a little bit like serene meditation doing it. I don't know. It, it makes me pause for a little while and I really like that. The other one is to do what I did and like cut it out just a little around it first and then go in on detail because the more paper you have hanging the harder it's going to be to cut it out so by just doing a rough cut first it will be easier now i'm choosing papers this was like i was first thinking about this pink however or purple but the purple didn't really go with the cardstock then i thought about this uh, kind of greenery it was a little bit too busy and then i found this it has it's very similar to the technique I did with the po uh, poppy, where it used to have like this almost splatter. This actually do have a proper texture, a proper design, but it almost looked like a splatter at, with different colors in. I really, really like the design of the paper and being so soft and it worked perfectly for my soft flowers. So I just added a little bit of foam tape here and there, um, just where I thought so that if you, press on it it doesn't buckle in some places so you don't have to have a lot of it i made sure to line it up on the side where the flowers are cut because it will get some pressure on that corner and uh, then i'm just gonna push it down onto the edge and to finish that off i am going to add the miss you with a little heart and i didn't really have any inks that had this color because uh i have very little inks like 
stamping inks i have a lot of this i have all the distress inks and distress oxides but i don't have like that many ordinary inks so i went in with the distress oxide uh wilted violet for the little sentiment and that is the video for today and for the giveaway which you all have been watch waiting for the giveaway is going to be all of these four cards for, for a different person and one is going to get the watercolor pencils. So comment down below, tell me which color is uh, card is your favorite and I will pick four of them at, and in a week's time I will send those out or contact you and send those out. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!